Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today, I have asked someone who's been quite popular to come back and give us some kind of a message, an inspirational message, as we are looking in, leaning in to 2019. Whether you watch this video during that time or any other time, just know that it is alive with energy and will fill you up with hope and inspire your spirit because that is the point here at Above Life Channel. So ladies and gentlemen, viewers, let's invite in Mr. Freddie Mercury. Come on in. <laughs> and he like literally comes in, he's like hugging me, giving me a kiss on the cheek and hugging me. Ah, hey Bridget, yes, I know. I'm like, hey, nice to see you. He says, I brought the cats. I brought my cats and I'm allergic to cats, <laughs> but they're, this is a spirit thing. So it's totally fine. Everybody human form. I'm fine. Um, there's a really white fluffy cat with some gray by its mouth, uh, kind of nose mouth kind of thing. And it's got really long hair and super, super fluffy. That's the one I'm noticing. I also see one that's darker that has black on it and a little bit of white. So he's got like this white, predominantly white cat. And then another cat that's darker and kind of black. Um, He's got more than two, but those are the two I see. I see at least three. I know there's at least three. Actually, there's four. There might be five. Okay, there's a lot. All right, there we go. Um, I see the white one, you know, like a princess. Like, she's like a princess. He's rubbing the neck right here. Like she's a princess. All right. Um, so, Freddie, it's a pleasure to connect with you again. You have such a lovely spirit. It's just, I enjoy talking with you. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunities now, you know, and... Um, I would love to share with viewers because I know so many people love, just love your energy too, as I have come to really love your energy. Share with us some inspiration. We need some inspiration for the new year. Come on in and share it with us and give us some, give us some motivation. He's kind of like, like me, I sure didn't want David Bowie. He's like, I sure didn't want Bowie. David can come in. <laughs> No, 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 no. Freddie, we want you. We want you. You're so genuine and caring. Can you give us some, um, if you can't, you know, maybe asking you just to inspire us is kind of a lot, right? So let's ask for, give, okay, so this is a good question. Give us, uh, for those of us who are sensitive, which is everybody that's watching this video has sensitivity, whether you recognize it or not, empathic energy, which is the psychic gift of clairsentience, your feeling, because that's the point. I love that. You're feeling. Um, talk to us about us when we're over feeling. Like we get really overwhelmed. Like this change of the year, maybe the holidays for people, maybe it's, you know, just that they're going through a tough time, maybe, or maybe not. Maybe they're going through a great time. Maybe they just got engaged or something wonderful. And then now they're like, oh my gosh, overwhelmed with like planning or having to do things, just overwhelmed. How do we manage that as sensitive beings? How do we do that? Like what your spirit, tell us how to deal with that, you know, and you're a sensitive guy. He says, he's kind of going like this. He's got a mustache. He's kind of moving it like this a little bit with his lips. He says, um, if I knew how to do that, I would know the secret to happiness. <laughs> he says, I would know the secret, <laughs> the big secret. Um, now though, um, from a spiritual context, right? That's what you want. Mm -hmm. um, he says, uh, I can feel his energy. So if I, if when I make facial, people have commented on this, so I gotta say it. When I do facial stuff, it's because I'm feeling the energy. And so I'm, I translate energy as much as I translate words, you guys. I'm really good at the energy stuff. If you haven't figured that out, go rewatch stuff and feel the energy, okay? Feel it. Um, He's like thinking and I can feel him moving his mouth. In the context of spirituality, of the reality of spirit, I'd say the most important thing you can do is to be yourself and let people know you. Let people know who you are. It's not fair to people. They, especially if you get into a relationship with someone and you act a certain way and then all of a sudden you can't act that way anymore because you can only keep up that facade for so long and then all of a sudden you gotta just be yourself or revert back to your old ways and that really confuses people. And I know I've been guilty of that myself. I've been guilty of that myself and trying to be what you think the world needs or wants for you and that's just misery. That's a life of misery. That's just not worth it. 
in the spirit, we know each other anyway. So we can tell, you can sense what's real and what's not. You can tell what's true and what's not. Soul to soul, spirit to spirit, and where you are really building your relationship and, and that seeking, that desire to connect is in the soul. Your soul recognizes the other souls. And so there really is no uh, masquerading. It, it does not work. It's like dress up and it, it, sooner or later you're gonna be naked. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Um, that's the truth. He says, that's the truth. But I don't think, I don't think that, he says, but I don't think people will listen to that. I, I really don't think people will change, I, I, that I can change their mind. I think the best way to change someone's mind is because you're really asking to change their, what they value, what they think is true, uh, what they believe to be true and to change that that's that's work that's effort so the person who has to want to be in the state that you you speak about is being awareness uh to know what you're thinking to recognize how you're speaking in your in your own head what what is this inner dialogue what is this inner discussion that's happening what is that and i think uh one of the best ways for people to to be themselves is to know who they are. And sometimes you just have no idea who you are because of all the other messages and, and all of the other outside expectations that are placed upon you, whether it's from your family or uh, a religion or a community or a career. There are a lot of other expectations being put upon you and it can be hard because it can crush in your heart what you know to be true. And there's a struggle to come back to that and to recognize what parts are really you and what parts are the voices of others. And it's in the mind, it's really a mind game, it's a head game, and it's not easy. And you can't do it, you can't, you can't change other people. You can only make decisions that affect yourself and how other people absorb that if it's a shock or if it's this big departure from who they think you are and what your reputation is or what they see in you and what they expect of your image whether you're famous or not i'm not talking about fame i'm talking about your image the way that you present yourself so other people will will like that and we're so afraid that we're not going to be loved, you know, that people aren't going to like us, let alone love us. But the truth is, we, we just are love. Deep inside of you, there's just love. And I wish I had known that. I wish I had known that. And over time, I think that you could argue that uh, my awareness or my, my sense of self, he says, my sense of self, became more important to me than what others thought. It still hurts. Oh, 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 oh. it's still ups upsetting. It's still very upsetting when people write things that aren't true about you or they embellish or make up stories or, you know, it's much worse now with the tabloids and things, um, the internet and all of the things you deal with and, and the social media aspects. I mean, that's don't, don't even, I can't even imagine. It's in your face all the time. Um, I would suggest to take breaks from that outside noise and to give yourself the freedom to simply be and, and in a space where you can do what you want, what pleases you, and to recognize that what pleases you, what is, it, is enjoyable to you, is what brings you to know more fully and to recognize the parts of you that are truly you and not others voices images or or projections you know like a, a illusions of you illusions of you that's really important and i i, I think that I, I see value in everyone and i recognize that it's the misfits that will change the world it's those that are not easily understood but it's because they don't need to be 
because they have so much connection to the love inside of them. But that connection to the love comes from necessity and survival, not because, you know, they came from a broken home or they were homosexual or they were, um, they faced other ways that they were rejected or not included, not belonging. And it is those individuals that have this tremendous amount of resilience. And it's those individuals that we can learn a great deal from. I don't put myself into that category. Do I feel like a misfit? Yeah, yeah, I do. I feel like I was definitely, um, you know, different. And I think that that's okay. Difference is, different is a good thing. You know, variety is a good thing. And it's, yet it's not rewarded. Or the rewards that you see from being different are only a few. And it's not, it is the exception, not the norm. And so I wouldn't suggest to people to strive to be different. I would say strive to be more of yourself. And the best way to do that is to recognize, to know that what you really want is love. And that love that you're looking for outside and from other places is already inside you. That, that you just got it. That it's just gifted to you and you just have to open that box receive it like a big present, you know? That's what it is, a big present. And that present is inside you. And it's just there, it's always there, you know? But you forget, I forgot. You kind of numb yourself, you know? You forget. And, and you question, you know, you do question yourself. Is this enough? Is this good enough? Because you know, you know that you can always be better. You can always do more. So there's this constant reaching to uh, stretch, stretch yourself. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. But it's important to always have a place within yourself to come back to, to know, to ground you, you know, to really just give you this, this sense of purpose and sense of self, this, this, that there is this love, just this, it's just given. It's just the way it is. And, the sensitivity that you talk about, the, the overwhelm comes from knowing that it's there, but not knowing how to access it or not seeing it. Knowing it's there, but not seeing it's there. Um, and uh, what I mean by that is um, there's sort of a part of ourselves that recognizes, uh, has this uh, belief. I think it's a common belief a common shared uh, belief that it has to be hard, that you don't just get things aren't just given to you. Things that you don't just get love. I mean, you have to prove that, right? You have to have some kind of value or some kind of exchange or somebody, you have to pay for that. And that's, that's a lie. That's a flat out lie. That's a bold faced lie. That is not true. And if you can just get over that, if you can just accept that that's not true and that there's love inside of you, then in your heart there's love, then you can start to feel that, you know, to start to experience that inside of yourself. And you do that a lot of ways, you know, music, meditation, um, nature, um, and looking up at the stars at night, just so. There's so many simple things that can create that beautiful love energy inside there, you know, that can access that inside you. You can wake it up, you know, wake it up a little bit. It's easy to get overwhelmed. That, that's a natural human thing. That's just, it's what happens when all of your circuits are overloaded and the energy of the desire is so high and it kind of blurs out the fact that you already have what you need. What you're looking for, you already have. It's inside you. And it's in the form of energy, not in the form of a tangible something I can touch, like a cat. He's like, hey, like a cat. Or a lover. It's, or a check, big money. He shows me this big like money clip and stack of money. It's not that. First, it's here. First, it's a feeling. First, it's that... Uh, Bridget uses the word energy a lot, so I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that versus that frequency, you know, what are you tapping into kind of thing. Um, first, it's here. 
So when you're overwhelmed, that means that there's just too much static and too much fuzziness and too much you're jumping ahead, like you're jumping into the swimming pool with your clothes on. Go get your swimsuit on. It takes like two minutes. Prepare yourself. Get ready for that, you know? And you do that by, you know, inside here, in the heart. And that's, that's what everybody wants. That's, the, that's what binds us. This. This. It's really not that complicated, but people sure make it complicated, don't they? Yeah, I know, I know. I myself too. I, I, I did struggle with that. You know, I struggled with love and being loved and trying to understand what that meant, you know. And I'd say the closest thing I had to love was my bandmates. You know, we were like family. Just, And it wasn't that everyone had your back or they were protecting you. It wasn't that. It was a just a a genuine bond and uh, that you just you could it was always a bond whether you were together or not making music or not there was just this unspoken a bond and that gave you strength you always had if something to kind of fall to catch you and bring you back to center you know bring you back in if you kind of leaned out a little bit too far they bring you back in kind of thing and in a in a way that's a gentle sometimes abrupt okay i'll say that sometimes it's a you know a knock over the head but it's like a brotherhood you know family that's the closest thing that that i think other people would look at my life when i was a person and see that and understand, they, then they would understand that. They would understand that. And, and I don't want people to feel sad. When you look at my life, don't feel sad for what, what wasn't. Look at all that was, you know. I, I have, a, I have a, a great amount of appreciation for what has been created since I've been gone. And the only reason, well, in part, I like to take credit, yeah. Yes, I will in part because of what I did by living my life, the way I did it, the mistakes and all, the mess and all, all of it, everything, all the good stuff, all the bad stuff, all the, the wicked stuff, all the messy stuff, all the popularity or not, all the critics or, or lovers. Look what has been created now because of that. Doesn't it make you want to ask what's possible for you and your life? I, I hope that it does. I hope that others can learn from that from me. I hope that they can. That would feel good. That would really feel good. And that is part of the purpose of the spirit of the afterlife for me, to be as a spirit, to spread the understanding that the energy that you feel and the sensitivity that you feel when you express the kindness and the compassion toward other people you owe it to yourself to express and to live to really practice living in that state inside of you in that love state for yourself it's not always wonderful and la 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 la, la. it's not always perfect it's not even close to that but it's about acceptance and being yourself and having an appreciation for that beauty of all that it is and what you can create because of that. But you've got to have that kindness and compassion that you give to other people. You've got to have that for yourself. It's so important. You can only do half-assed stuff. You can't do what you need to do for the world. For yourself, you're never going to be fully happy until you are feeling, experiencing love inside of yourself for you. Not because someone loves you, because you are love. You just are. You, that's what you are. That's who, who, who you are. I don't know if I can convince you, but I might just try. I might just try. And I think Bridget will help me. 
okay. Very much a guide for sensitives, for people who are empathic, for people that are, are really deeply striving, I think, right, on the human path to be themselves, to know themselves really well, and, to, and, and people who are, are desiring self-love and self-care, people that struggle with self-doubt or why me or vulnerability and, and um, who try to hide the energy of being vulnerable and, and try to be tough and strong and instead of taking care of their own stuff or just giving to everybody else and you know focusing on everybody else and not taking care of themselves. And I, I feel like you are definitely an advocate for that, for the, the people who are sensitives. I think that's a really good message for 2019. If you are a sensitive type, ask Freddie Mercury. Yes, you can. Don't act like, oh, but he's too good for me. Oh, he's such a legacy. Oh, he's such a legend. If you have not learned anything by watching the channel, learn this. You can connect with him or any other person that you want to in the afterlife. You just got to do it. You just got to do it. Start meditating. Start chatting with them. Start a journal. Start practicing by watching these videos and starting to feel the energy. Receive the gifts of the energetic connection like with Freddie Mercury. Do it. And if it's not your jam, don't do it. Don't waste your time. Don't watch anymore. It's your choice. And that's okay with us. We're, I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that? Yeah, because I'm being who I am as Bridget right here, right now. And you are serving your role, my friend Freddie, in the afterlife by being a guide to people who are sensitive and then being a stand for helping people to believe in themselves, to be who they are created to be. And I believe in that too. And so that's perfect. See, we're, good, we're a good team, I guess, aren't we? Hmm? So this is Bridget at Above Life Channel. You've been watching a dialogue, an afterlife conversation with Freddie Mercury. I asked him for some inspirational messaging for 2019 but if you're watching this at any time it's totally valid take a listen and remember the purpose of these weekly channeling conversations with afterlife celebrities is to inspire your spirit and to give you hope because this right here right now this is your life this is your life and it's your choice it's your choice Live it. Just live it. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. If you know somebody that could be inspired by it, make sure you share it with them. Thank you so much for watching.